Our final lecture on early season apple diseases will cover juniper rusts, focusing on cedar apple rust. The learning outcomes for this lecture are to be able to describe the symptoms of juniper rust, know the name of the fungus that causes cedar apple rust, describe the life cycle of cedar apple rust, both on cedar and apple, and identify management strategies that are used to control cedar apple rust, both on cedar and on apple. Juniper rusts are caused by species of gymnosporangium. Each species of gymnosporangium spends part of its life cycle on a juniper host and part on one or more hosts in the rose family and requires both hosts to complete their life cycle. Juniper rusts have similar disease cycles, but differ in which juniper and rosacea species they infect. Cedar apple rust is caused by Gymnosporangium juniperi virginiani. On the leaves, pale yellow spots appear on the upper surface during May or June, and as the disease develops, the lesions turn orange and often have a reddish border, as shown in the first image on this slide. On the underside of the leaves, yellow spots develop, and during late spring and early summer, a number, a number of small orange-yellow tubular projections called ACI appear. And those ACI are shown here in the second image. This is the underside of an apple leaf. You can see the yellow lesion and then these tubular-like structures, which are called ACI. On fruit, as I'm showing um, in the second two images here, similar yellow-orange spots appear, usually at or near the calyx end of the fruit. These spots are slightly raised, <coughs> which is easiest to see here in this last image. And the tube-like acia can also form on the slightly raised fruit lesions, which is better seen here on the third image. These white, orangey, cream-colored structures are the acia. When fruits are affected early uh, in the maturing process, they are often stunted and deformed. On juniper hosts, rust is hard to miss. The pathogen forms these large galls, which are shown here, which are basically a mass of mycelium that are surrounded by a hard coat. In the spring during rainy periods, the galls mature and they swell and produce orange gelatinous horn-like growths as shown in this image on the right. Like all rust life cycles, the disease cycle is complex. As I mentioned earlier, gymnosporangia fungi require two hosts to complete their life cycle, which means the fungi are heteroaceous. So hetero means other or different, and oaceous is an adjective to describe the host of an organism. So heteroaceous means different hosts. For cedar apple rust, Apple is the primary host, and cedar is the alternate host. In its entirety, the disease cycle takes, to, takes a year to complete, and on apple, the disease is monocyclic. So we are gonna go over the disease cycle on both cedar and apple in more detail, and we'll start with the life cycle on cedar. So the fungus overwinters on cedar and the primary, <clears throat> excuse me, the primary infections on cedar occur in the fall by aceospores, which are produced on the apple host. The fungus produces masses of mycelium on cedar and these masses harden to form the brown galls that I'm showing here. During rainy weather, the galls mature, they swell, and they produce orange gelatinous horn-like growths called teleohorns, 
So in the images on the right, the top right, this is uh, a gall that is starting to form telio horns. So it hasn't completely uh, matured yet to, re to produce all of the telio horns. On the bottom image here, you can see that all of the telio horns have been produced. These telio horns produce teliospores, which then germinate and form basidia. Swelling and drying of the telio horns can occur multiple times during the season, and each time the helio, each time the telio horn swells, it releases teliospores. So this means that teliospores are produced for several weeks continuously in the springtime. Okay, so looking at the disease cycle a little close, more closely, here are the aceospores. Again, they uh, are produced on apple. And here is a telia horn, which produces numerous teliospores. So if you can see all the teliospores around the horn here. If we blow that up, this is what a teliospore would look like up close. Each teliospore germinates to form a four-celled basidium, which is shown down here. So here's the teliospore. It's germinating and you get this basidium. Each cell on the basidium then produces a single basidiospore, which are shown here. So one teliospore will produce four basidiospores. Basidiospores are produced within four hours of the horns absorbing water when the temperature is between 46 and 75 degrees Fahrenheit. The basidiospores are forcibly discharged into the air and immediately after being formed, they are carried for up to a mile on wind currents to a susceptible apple host. After the basidiospores are released, the galls die and often the twig or branch that had the gall on it will also die. So the life cycle of cedar apple rust begins in the fall down here and ends up here in the spring with the release of these basidiospores. So now we'll take a look at what occurs during the summer on the apple host. So starting here with the basidiospore, which again was produced on cedar and is the source of the primary inoculum on apple. So the spores will land on a susceptible apple leaf or fruit and this will begin the life cycle stage then on the apple. So infections by basidiospores occur when temperatures are between 52 and 77 degrees Fahrenheit. And it also requires that there is an average of four continuous wetting hours. One to two weeks after infection, pycnia, or a pycnium as shown here, form and this is what you observe as the orange pustules on the upper side of a leaf. So this pycnium will show up as that orangish red lesion on the leaf's upper surface. Pycnium contain pycneospores as well as spermatia and both of these can fertilize compatible receptive hyphae to form dikaryotic mycelium. So one or two months after the, pycnium fo the pycnea form, the mycelia will grow downward in the tissue, so it'll go down through the tissue of the leaf or, or the fruit, and you will have the acium, which the plural being acia form on the underside of the leaves or near the calyx end of the fruit. So within the acium are aceospores, which are shown here in chains. And these aceospores are released during dry conditions in late summer and then wind dispersed to the cedar. So aceospores that land on the 
Young cedar leaves can infect then and cause gall formation. And generally that occurs in the second year after infection that the galls will mature to produce teleospores and continuing the life cycle then of the pathogen. In this cross section of the leaf shown here on the left, you can see that there are two pycnia, one here and one here, and they're on the upper side of the leaf. On the lower side of the leaf, you can see very clearly uh, an acium, which is here, and that all of the acyospores that are being produced and will be released and cause a primary infection uh, on the cedar. So on the right here, you can see what the acea look like on the underside of the leaf. This is a crabapple leaf, and you can also see what it looks like on a crabapple. Um, these long tubular structures, and then these spores will be, the acyospores will be released from these tubular structures, which are the acium or the ACI. Okay, so looking at management then, because there are two hosts, disease management must be implemented for both hosts in order to have successful control. As with all early season apple diseases, host resistance should be the first line of defense. So for cedar apple rust, there are a lot of varieties of apples that have resistance which makes it a bit easier for growers to select a cultivar for resistance compared to other diseases, such as powdery mildew or fire blight. You can see here in this chart that uh, Fuji and Ga Gala, which are popular varieties, uh, have resistance. However, Honeycrisp down here, which is probably one of the most popular varieties right now by consumers, is susceptible. So for growers that are surrounded by natural cedar plantings, such as those in the Appalachians, and I'm showing three pictures of three different apple orchards in Appalachian, Ohio. Planting cultivars res with resistance to junipers needs to be a priority. And this is because there are a lot of natural plantings of cedars in the Appalachian region of Ohio. Ideally, they would want to select a variety with resistance to apple scab as well. And if they have resistance then to both apple scab and cedar apple rust, they could use a minimal spray program to control powdery mildew, which is another early season apple disease, if you recall. Within an established orchard, any cedars surrounding the orchard should be removed, as well as any cedars that pop up in the orchard. In older orchards, as the one shown here, it's not uncommon to see cedars coming up from seed. These rogue cedar plants should be removed as soon as they're spotted. So finally, uh, on, to manage cedar apple rust on apples, fungicides are re recommended. And fungicides are applied from the pink bud stage to the end of the terminal shoot growth stage. And here I'm showing you the, this is what the pink bud stage looks like. And the terminal shoot stage, that corresponds to the second cover spray or the first summer spray that's applied to control summer apple diseases. Similar to the other early season apple diseases, there are many effective fungicides registered for cedar apple rust control on apple, and these should be applied on a seven to 10 day schedule or a calendar spray program. So management of the fungus on cedar is a bit more difficult, especially for commercial growers surrounded by natural cedar plantings. 
Initial site selection is important for commercial growers. Again, especially with those who have a lot of natural plantings in their area, natural cedar plantings in their area. Although basidio spores can travel up to one mile, the majority of inoculum is from diseased cedars that are about 100 to 200 feet away. Therefore, removing cedar plantings up to 20, up to 200 feet from around the orchard is recommended. If growers want to have cedars around their orchards for aesthetic reasons, they can plant resistant varieties of cedar. And this is also recommended, the planting of resistant varieties for homeowners who want to grow apple varieties that don't have resistance to cedar apple rust or who don't want to be implementing an intensive calendar spray program. There are several resistant varieties of junipers available, and I've listed a few here, so it's, it's not difficult to make sure that you have um, cedars in your yard that have resistance to cedar apple rust. Another option for homeowners is that they can cut out and destroy any galls that they see on the cedars, but this has to be done before the teleo horns are formed so, so in this image here, you can see that the cedar is already at the teleoform stage and because basidio spores are re released almost immediately, it would be too late to prune them out at this stage. So they need to be pruned out when they're at that brown gall-like stage and ideally during the first year because remember that these teleospores don't um, these teleo horns don't uh, form until the second year on the cedar. If they are going to be pruning, they need to make sure that they're disinfesting their uh, pruners and they can use a 10% bleach solution for this or rubbing alcohol. Okay, so that ends um, our lecture series on early season apple diseases. Our next module will be on summer apple diseases.